You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, this, this is nothing you can know what's up in the hood. It does because the after effects on it is what it can do to the body. A lot of people can't recuperate after it. And sometimes certain people, once they take a hit, they want another one. And they can't recuperate or function afterwards. One of the negative of drugs and violence is that you, it, it affects your system. You, kill, you can kill yourself by using drugs. You can't get a good job by using drugs, and like you can get fired from your job by using drugs. Well, drugs ca cause violence. If we never heard about drugs or anything, people wouldn't pay, pay attention to drugs because if we never knew about clothes, we wouldn't be wearing them, so we wouldn't know the difference about drugs or not. Because when you use drugs, it affects your brain and make you want to do crazy stuff that you wouldn't regularly do if you weren't on drugs. Drugs do actually play a critical role in society because um, it basically influences most of the violence and um, the, just basically the things that we do, it, it like strives life. Uh, I think it'll be... Uh, um, a kind of sort of better world because everybody wouldn't be, it wouldn't be no crackheads on the street and all that other stuff. To me, ain't no positive thing about what drugs can do to you or what drugs is. Well, basically I'm against drugs and violence because drugs take children away from their family. They have this like, Huge little DCFS little thing and everything like that, and they just basically take lives. And since 2005, there has been an estimated 33,000 um, people who have died from just overdosing of drugs. You know, they use needles. You sniffing stuff. You, you losing needles. You smoking after other people. You know, you don't know what they have. You don't know if they even know they have HIV or hepatitis or whatever like that. You know, it's already bad enough. You can catch a HPV from just rubbing on uh, skin contact, but you putting somebody else blood that needle that they using in you. That's 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 a sure win for whatever they get because the blood that you take in from that person, whatever they get, you can get it too. Drugs, they lead you into unemployment. If you have a good job, they 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 take you away from your family. Basically, you know you're not able to do everything that you thought you were able to do. And um, drugs, they have led to um, a lot of the criminal backgrounds and a lot of the criminal violence and everything like that that has been happening in the world since like the 1950s because that's when the epidemic actually really started from the heroin epidemic to to crack wave um um actually i i did actually uh i understand where genesis is coming from on a part where you know Drugs does deteriorate your body and it does um, cause you to lose your job and it does, you know, uh, make your personality a bit rough also and it does take you away from your family. When you, when you in your right mind, it takes away your personality. It takes away from you, period. All the things that you like to do, that you thought you liked to do as you were a child or whatever like that, it stops you from doing that because now you high and you so strung out and just completely blown out that you just sitting there stuck and can't really do nothing else. You don't have an appetite when you do drugs. I mean, I done seen a lot of people that actually sit there and do drugs and got kids sit there with them and they don't feed their kids because they think their kids not hungry because they not hungry. 
mainly putting it out there like, you know, drugs is bad for you, drugs is that. Okay, what about the people that have that have been arrested? Like if your your mom or your dad could have been arrested, so they can't get no job. So how they gonna provide for you? They gonna kill and rob, you know what I'm saying? What about the people who who actually don't have a choice in whether or not they use drugs and they just actually are just put into that environment and actually, you know, just put into that circumstance and now they just strung out and they don't have nothing else to do and now they out here fiending and stuff for all these drugs and whatnot like that. What about those people? I was about 11 years old when I found out. She almost set the house on fire. Majority of my childhood, I really didn't have a lot of time to spend with her. It was like she was there, but she wasn't. Just left me there. When I found out when my mother was on drugs, I mean, I knew, but I was too little to understand, really. But as I got up into age, I kind of figured out what it was and kind of figured out why she wasn't around, why she wasn't spending time with me. It affected my relationship with my mother by not letting, not letting me have a lot of time to spend with her. For the majority of my childhood, I really didn't have a lot of time to spend with her. I spent time with her, but not like how I wanted to, you know, like a father, like a mother some relationship should be, it wasn't like that. It was this one time where I got in trouble in school. It was on a Thursday and Friday, on, on, usually every Friday we would go to Markham Roller Skate Ring. So I got in trouble that Thursday, so I couldn't go anywhere Friday. So I thought she was in the bed asleep, so I snuck out the kitchen window and went up to the church, because that's where the bus pick you up at the church and it takes you to Markham Roller Skate Ring. Snuck out and went to the roller skate rink. Had a time of my life. Got back home and that was the worst time of my life. Yeah. She was high. My parents don't know, but my mom knows. Like, she caught me doing it and she's really upset about it. And now she thinks I'm a bad kid for it. But I've been taking marijuana since I was in sixth grade, so. She hasn't known, but she recently found out. So she's starting to think I'm a bad kid, but I'm not. I believe my mama stole from the house, um, stole money. Um, she would stay away from days at a time. I don't know what she was doing at that particular time, but she would stay away quite a time um, to keep up her habit. I think I started doing it because I was just, you know, depressed. Who wants to see their, you know, their parents? No, on drugs. They always work. My yes, my dad was an alcoholic. Yes, he's been a cokehead, but he's still an idol, and he still could be something. My mom, she's a nurse. There's, I don't never blame my parents. They never noticed. People looked at me like, man, this dude is a drug head. He likes doing drugs when I really wasn't. I just like smoking weed back then. The drug I took was five grams of premature mushrooms and I ate it in a peanut butter sandwich and it was a horrible night because I ran away from my home that night. I went to my friend's house and I was going to crash there. Then uh, his mom said I couldn't sleep there so right when the mushrooms started kicking in they kicked me out the house and uh, I tried like walking around trying to find my way home but I couldn't read for anything like to save my life. I came across a bar where this guy, he was really drunk. I asked him, how do I get home? So he already had a cab, and he's like, here man, just take it. He gave the taxi driver $20, and he was like, can you make sure he gets home fine? Sure, and I got home. I went in the bathroom to smoke, because my brother smoked, so I would've just blamed it on them. And my mom found out, so she got all angry, and she started yelling, and I thought it was supposed to make you happy, but at that moment it just made me mad and more angry and 
made me think of a whole bunch of stuff, so I got mad at my mom. I took pills, I tried to kill myself, I prayed not to wake up. I got into an altercation with one of my closest friends. We couldn't get a weed connect, and it took us about two and a half hours to find one, and we still didn't find one, so we said, screw it. And we was going home, and on my way home, he kept on pissing me off about how we could have gotten it from this place and that place, and I'm an idiot, I'm stupid, I should have listened to him. And he, he kept wanting to fight me in the middle of the street for it. He kept pushing me, and I told him, leave it alone. It's just a bag of weed. And then he took me to the edge, so I told him, he said, you want to fight? Then come with me to my crib. I got, I got something for you. Went in my house, grabbed a knife, and I tried to kill him. Time, I was, with, I was at the park, just chilling. Chilling with like a whole bunch of homeboys from the hood or whatever you want to call it. And they gave me something. They said that it was weed. It wasn't weed. I don't know what it was. But I remember waking up to a man and I don't, I don't know who this man was and he looked 40 years old. I think that we need to teach our children um, because times have, have changed from back in the 80s. I didn't know what drugs were until I got older. And I think now the children, they know so much. It's like right there. You can get it from anybody. When I grow up, I want my kids seeing me not being uh, I want them to know that I'm going to be there for them. And I ain't going to go nowhere. Just do you. Do what makes what you like to do. Like play video games if you want, smoke or thinking about or go outside and play sports with your friends. Just, you don't have to smoke to fit in or whatever. You just do you. Hi you guys, my name is Tamaya Malak. I'm a teenager that lives in Chicago at Tennessee PS School. And today I want to talk to my peers and other teens like you about drugs. Not just any old kind of drugs. When teenagers think of drugs, the first thing that comes to mind is alcohol and marijuana. There are many different types of drugs that are coming back into the market that were popular in the 70s. These drugs are called psychedelics, which are psychoactive drugs whose primary, primary action is to alter cognition and perception. Psychedelics are part of a wide class of hallucinogens. Psychedelics tend to affect the mind in ways that result in the experience being qualitatively different from those of ordinary consciousness. The psychedelic experience is often compared to non-ordinary forms of consciousness, such as trance, meditation, yoga, religious ecstasy, dreaming, and even near-death experiences. The term psychedelic derives from Greek words meaning mind-relieving, the implication being that psychedelics can access the soul and develop unused of the human mind. The word was coined in 1957. Psychedelic drugs include mushrooms, peyote, PCP, LSD, and marijuana. These natural substances have been used in religious ceremonies for decades. As participants look for ways to increase their consciousness and connect with the divine. The way that these drugs work isn't completely understood by researchers quoted in an article from The Guardian suggested that the drugs may shut down parts of the brain. Um, I guess it was just curiosity. For me, I, I done research on like the monks for some reason and I found out that for thousands of years they've used mushrooms for like uh, an awakening.
for the for, for the most part, when you eat them, they they don't taste very good. They taste like they just taste bad, and you get kind of a nausea effect where you know you feel like you got to throw up for about good thirty minutes or so. You know, but for the most part, the craziest thing I've seen was when I looked at this tree. It was a giant tree, and it seemed like the tree was breaking itself apart, like down to the atom and showing me like the structure of it, like how it was formed, like down to like the last like neutron, like, and then it all went back together. And then I came back and I was just like, whoa, it was, it was pretty crazy. I, um, I was outside and I was walking around and I felt this like, I feel like connected to everything. Like I was looking at like trees and the sky and everything. I felt like I was really a part of it. And for the visuals, everything was like melting. I saw like geometric patterns everywhere. I was seeing some like, like kind of spiritual, not spiritual, like religious looking patterns, like pyramids, like Egyptian type things. And it was just really interesting. Ingesting hallucinogenic drugs can cause users to see images, hear sounds, and feel sensations that seem real, but do not exist. Their effects typically begin within 20 to 90 minutes of ingesting and can last as long as 12 hours. Experiences are often unpredictable and may, bear, and may vary with the amount of drugs that are ingested. The user's personality, mood, expectations, and surroundings are altered. Users refer to LSD as another and other hallucinogenic experiences as trips and the acute, adverse and unpleasant experiences as bad, as bad trips. On some trips, users experience sensations that they are enjoyable and mentally stimulated and that produce a sense of heightened understanding. Bad trips, however, include terrifying thoughts and nightmarish feelings of anxiety and despair in, that include fear of losing control, insanity, or death. The most common after effects of using a psychedelic are changes in personality or personal actions brought about due to realizations or inspirations that transpire during the course of a trip. It's the same theory behind how meditation could lead to enlightenment or how habitual behaviors are developed. Some psychedelic experiences result in psychological disorders. Some psychedelic users experience flashbacks. Flashbacks are the experience of a change in your thoughts, feelings, or perceptions that resemble a previous experience. Any extremely intense experience can cause flashbacks to occur. They are considered a general symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. Hallucinogen persisting perception disorder is the experience of long-term visual problems caused by taking psychedelics. It is only considered HPPD when normal life is hindered by the perceptual changes. I mean, I mean, I was freaked out a little bit, you know. I didn't have any regrets. I didn't really have a negative experience. Because, like, it's, it's mostly about, like, mind control. Like, you can control it. Like, if, if you're, like, in a negative state of mind, your trip's going to be negative. is being shown something you know and told about it you know that their their mind is going to tell them like yeah i feel like you know i should try this because it seems cool and i don't think if you get pressure from doing it you should not do it because that's probably not going to end well I feel like everything uh, that is put on this earth is put on this earth for a purpose, you know? But some people can take advantage of those things. If you have like a purpose in doing it, don't just do it for fun. Like don't be like, I'm going to party, let's trip. Be like... Make sure there's a reason behind.
people who just do drugs for no reason, I don't think they should be doing drugs because some people just do weird things already and it's just gonna boost it up just to make them do more weird things. Just be safe, make good decisions. Don't do it for no reason because in the long run, it can kind of affect how your parents feel about you. Despite the fact that psychedelics have been around forever, today we still haven't fully discovered all the effects that they have. They have been used under strict supervision for scientific research and shown that they enable certain neutron connections that otherwise do not happen. Also, they have been used in spiritual healing traditions since ancient times by shamans. However, those substances are very potent and present a huge danger if unsupervised, unguided for leisure. Okay, so you just heard what me and my peers have to say, what other teenagers like you have to my say. My message to you is to just be yourself, be true to yourself by any means necessary because you're only, you have one you. After you're addicted to the drugs, you're addicted. Yes, you have rehab, but who want to go through that? So, what well, my advice to you, stay safe. Don't get under peer pressure. Just be yourself. Thanks for watching. Garfield Park is made up of 20,925 residents. Some of the neighborhood schools are Al Raby, Delano, and Leaf Arison. Humble Park is made up of 65,587 residents. Some of the neighborhood schools are Roberto Clemente, Von Humboldt, and Chopin. These are only two neighborhoods that contribute to Chicago's growing gang issues. Hi, my name is Avery and I live in Humboldt Park, and this video is about how gangs affect our life. Gang violence does have a huge impact on my neighborhood because in my hood, if you walk around with your head cocked on the wrong side, you'll have like 30 people on your back. People may get uh, intimidated by them. Um, it gets the neighborhood hot, and uh, kids can play uh, freely, and uh, you never know what's, what's going to go on today or the next day. This area is notorious for gang activity. Walking down with Vancia towards Tallman Avenue, I'm always on high alert because I never know when someone can stop me for thinking I'm a gangbanger. This area is formerly known as teed up by the gangbangers. How does the presence of gangs in your neighborhood affect you? It doesn't necessarily affect me, but I, I believe that it affects the kids. The kids can't go outside to play because, you know, oh, like, parents are nervous because of what's, what will happen. Something will go up, go down, you know, so I think it affects the neighborhood as a whole because, you know, parents are more leery of their children and, you know, they can't go outside and enjoy the, enjoy the summer, you know. It's, it's, it's a constant panic, if you will. The gang violence in my neighborhood of Garfield Park has a huge effect on the residents. The neighborhood has become increasingly dangerous due to the feudings over gang territory. The gang population in my neighborhood is involved in illegal activities in order to make money. I grew up around gang activity all my life, so I'm familiar with it. That gangs has such a huge effect on all the people of the community. Whether you have friends who are affiliated or you are more aware of your, of your surroundings, these are the feelings that everyone in the Humble Park community has experienced. What do you believe attracts youth to the joining gangs? Well, they, they may think it's cool, um, they may think it's fun, you know, running around and doing stuff, you know, crazy stuff like that. Um, and but it it could also lead them to 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 jail or you know or to a bad path. What attracted me towards the gang was my brothers, my granddad, my daddy. Like I just see them like they'll take group pictures and they'll just just 
throw up signs and stuff and I like wonder like what is they throwing up because the only sign I know was a peace sign. That's the only sign I knew. But then like I seen like how they was just always in groups. No matter where they went, they was always in groups. And they was like so respect that they showed so much respect towards each other and loyalty and like I just wanted to become a part of it. I figured out a way to rise above it. I don't follow people, I actually try to be a leader. I know a lot of people from Humble Park who game bank, but I just simply just don't fall into the stupid stuff that they do. I, I actually want to be something in life. I don't want to just sit around and waste my life on a corner doing nothing and start doing drugs and fall in with bad influences and stuff. I want, I want to influence people to do better. I plan on going to college and getting a decent job and for those people who are in gangs, like, get out of it while you can. It's, the longer you're in it, the harder it gets for it to come out. Even though I come from the background that I do, I can prove to other people that the stereotypes about the area are not true.